Hello, Forecaster here again. Now this is a follow-up video to the last video in which I showed a an overtake setup but after I had published the last video I realized I had over designed the setup so I rebuilt it a lot simpler uh, not using almost any signal uh, or um, uh, signal boxes um, and it is also now the overtaking train keeps going on the main line and the slower train is directed to the uh, side track so what happens now is uh, pretty much the same as before uh, but a little different so when this block signal that represents this block behind is occupied this switch over here uh, is engaged so when the first train uh, is coming here this block will be occupied and the switch will be switched so that is why there is such a long distance from the block to the switch the train that is coming here has to have uh, enough clearance so when it leaves this block the switch has time to disengage otherwise if the switch is too close to this uh, post here uh, the, the first train might be diverted into the uh, side track regardless of whether there is a train behind it or not and we don't want that because that slows it down and takes time um, so we leave enough of a margin between the block and the switch so if there is no train behind the switch has time to disengage properly and not engage again otherwise when the train leaves this block the train behind that is waiting before the bridge over over um, in that direction uh, is going to enter the block almost immediately and the switch will then engage again and the first train will be diverted into the overtake track which as you can see is made of wooden track so it will slow down when it goes along here and then the train behind has to cover this distance in this block and then come here and then overtake the train and if this block here is clear it will continue here and here I have this block signal instead of being connected to this I have it connected to this receiver box here which splits the signal to these two controller boxes I then have this controller box connected to this receiver and this controller box connected to this receiver so if there is a train in this block here um, none of these two trains are allowed to enter because we don't want a train coming here and merging back into this main line if there is another train already in this block here so now we're going to see what happens so I'm flipping this lever which will release the trains on the bridge over there so first we have the slower freight train And as you can see, it because of this faster transport, it got diverted into the side track, and the transport now has time to overtake the freight train. So now we're going to see what happens when the faster train comes first. So because the freight train still enters the block behind almost immediately, the faster train still gets diverted into the side track. But since it's fast enough, it will have time to clear the side track before the slower train catches up. So the uh, in this case, the faster train would still get uh, get 
here first. Now this may vary based on the amount of carts. Say if this faster train had uh, three carts, just one cart less than this train, this might still might have time. Will probably still be faster uh, on this uh, iron track, and it would not be able to overtake. Uh, or it would be able to overtake this train, although uh, it is faster on the iron track. But this is still a relatively simple and functional overtake system that will work for most of the trains. Also in the other video, I had um, on the signal block crossovers, I had a setup with any detectors that were pointed at the locking tracks that would allow you to have trains going in this direction, ignore, not get caught by this locking track, and trains going in this direction would not be caught by this locking track and get stuck here permanently. Um, someone suggested using uh, directional detector tracks instead um which would allow you not have the problem of the speed where you if you went at the max speed you would slightly go into this block and activate the detector uh, which would prevent this locking track from stopping you even if the block ahead is occupied the directional detector tracks do not have this problem because they only activate, this will only activate when a train is coming in this direction. So when a train comes in this direction, it doesn't matter if it crosses into this block, because it's going against the arrow on the directional detector track, it will not activate. So the locking track will still catch you uh, if you're going in the right direction and the blockhead is occupied. But I discovered a problem when I came to this corner here. So if we take this freight train and we send it on its way, uh, since the block ahead is not occupied, it's not going to get caught by this locking track here. But it's supposed to ignore this locking track here, because this si uh, signal, which represents this block on this side here, is occupied by this train. This uh, receiver box is turned off. But the directional lock detector track here is supposed to power the um, locking track to keep it from catching this train because it's going in this direction. So it should ignore this locking track. But probably because the train is slowing down this turn, um, the directional detector track turns off and the locking track catches the train. So this doesn't quite work as it's supposed to. Uh, there's also there also appears to be kind of a gap between each of the carts. So there's a certain area that the cart takes up and that is where the uh, directional detector is able to detect the cart if it's going in the correct direction. So between each cart, the detector shuts off. So if this gap comes at the wrong time, there will be a brief moment where the locking track will be unpowered and will thus be able to catch the train. So when it comes to this gap here, the locking track will catch the train even though it's supposed to be powered by the detector track and I believe this is because the train is going too slowly because it just turned so you could still use this setup with the uh, directional detectors if you avoid doing this and putting one of these in in a corner like I did here because the straight ones like the one over here works fine now you could also do something like this so if we take 
a, a neat detector that is actually an advanced detector and put it like that and instead of putting the locking track directly next to it here we're going to put it here and then we're going to put a piece of redstone here and then we're going to put a suspended track on top of the redstone because the suspended track doesn't need a full block underneath it we can put uh, a track over this gap here now what this should do is if we back this train up here it will power this locking track keeping it from catching the train but if we come from this direction set the train to full speed it will catch the train and now we don't have the speed problem anymore because the uh, the detector is not uh, directly next to the locking track anymore so even if the train is going fast enough to cross into this next block a little bit it can't activate the detector because it's one block away so this is slightly more involved than just putting one detector and you need suspended tracks to do this but you don't need the uh, limiter tracks before and after each of the uh, block separations instead so this might be a better solution and it's not as unreliable as the uh, directional detectors and lastly when I had published the last video. Vexados, um, who hangs out in the Railcraft RC channel, uh, asked me if I wanted to use this resource pack he's made in my videos. Now, this resource pack, as you can see, uh, replaces the Railcraft's uh, signal textures as well as the locomotive track textures with ones that use shapes instead of colors to distinguish the different aspects. So we have green, yellow, and red aspects. Now, unfortunately, I not, I'm not a fan of the aesthetic of the colors he's chosen. So this yellowish uh, color is based off of a German tram system, I believe he said. And I I just don't like it. Also, the red aspect shape is part is pretty heavily obscured when you look at it from the side by this rain protection cap. So, um, his his resource pack also comes with a uh, language uh, with language files that uh, change the references to from the aspect colors to these words you see here um, so I don't like the aesthetic of the uh, signals themselves and I'm also not a fan of changing the aspect names uh, since this will probably cause confusion for people who have the uh, default names. So what I've done is I've made a custom version of his resource pack that looks like this. So what I've done is I've added the colors back and I've changed the shape of the red aspect to a cross which you can still partially see 
even when looking at it from the side. Uh, I also changed the um, the red to a sort of orange because the red was very dark or according to the colorblind filter for Photoshop that I used the red uh, wasn't very distinguishable you couldn't tell very well if it was lit or not I also did the same for the locomotive track except I kept the line for the red aspect because it's um, you won't it will, it's not obscured in any way I also will not be using the like I said the language pack because I prefer that the aspect keep their names uh, to avoid confusion. So that's it for this follow-up video and I'll see you in the next one.